Um, baby, if this is sisterhood, uh, yeah, I don't want it. Hey, what's up and hello, this is the Chris Nicole giving you my views on life, love, and the world of entertainment through my eyes. And this is my review on Bell Collective Season 3, Episode 8, The D Isn't Silent. And honey, based on what we saw at the end of this episode, that D, that D, yeah honey, it ain't silent at all. But we'll get into that a little later. So we start off with Marie and Tambra. And of course, they're still arguing. And Tambra says that Marie broke the woman code in regards to her coming to her about what this man said. And to a certain extent, I agree with Tambra. But Tambra, you do have to understand that you have been caught in lies. We have seen you get caught in your lies on this show. So this is why Marie probably moved the way that she moved. Besides the fact that, of course, this is a show and you have to move, I guess, this way to get the, the ratings that you want. But I think she purposely did that to Tambra because she doesn't know who the real Tambra is. So Tambra cries and Letitia consoles her and says that, you know, she's sorry for meeting that guy with Marie. Letitia, I don't know if I believe you. I'm just going to keep it a thousand. I don't know if I believe you. I think you also feel a certain way about Tambra. That's why you met with the guy. And she claims that Marie, she didn't know Marie was going to do that at the peace treaty. Don't know if I believe that either. At least Marie stood 10 toes down and was like, look, I just asked you questions. I just told you what the man said. But, you know, I just feel like Letitia she tries to be the peacemaker, but in reality, she low-key has certain issues with these women. And she just needs to be honest, like Marie is being honest about the situation. Like, you come off like you're fake, you come off like you're a liar, just own up to who the hell you are. So, Tambra leaves, and now we have So Gucci and Latrice, and they have their talk. Well, it it was supposed to be a talk, but they start off cordial at first. So, so Gucci, you know, talks about the whole real estate thing again. And um, she claims that she spoke to Latrice first before she spoke to any of the other bells regarding the situation. Now, so Gucci, based on the order of events that we see on the show, Okay, now I know editing is a powerful tool, but based on what we saw on the show, you definitely talked to the other women before you spoke to Latrice about the situation. Even Letitia in the confessional says that you spoke to her first before you spoke to Latrice. So Gucci, you got caught lying. You're lying, babes, because at the end of the day, what we saw, you was being messy by speaking to everyone else except for the main person you needed to speak to. So. So Gucci pretty much says, look, at the end of the day, it was dirty how you moved. You're not supposed to work with two real estate agents. And, you know, if we're supposed to be friends, you could have at least given me a heads up. And so Marie chimes in and says you should have, you know, had her sign a non-compete non agreement because, you know, no one is loyal anymore. And, you know, you got to protect yourself. Child, when Latrice heard Marie say no one is loyal anymore, Latrice went straight up, ain't no mf -er about to tell me about my loyalty. Like, she got really buck. She got buck, crunk, whatever you want to call it. She just kind of flipped out at that point. And so they start arguing. And so Gucci, baby, she could throw that shade when she wants to because Latrice was talking and she was like, this is a, this is my business and I can do whatever I want with my money. And Gucci was like, it wasn't your money. It was Cliff's money. <laughs> and so then Latrice was like, F a friend, uh, any bitch who got a problem with me. And 
Gucci was like, now mind you, Latrice is standing up and she kind of like pointing her finger like she ready to pop off. And so, so Gucci is like, you need to calm down because I will flip this table and you at the same time. And so Latrice is like, oh, like you did Selena. And then Gucci says, baby, uh, like Selena is having freaky tales with Cliff. Excuse me? But here's the thing. After she says that, Latrice says, even if she is, we doing him together. Child, <laughs> did Latrice just spill her own tea? <laughs> did she just spill her own tea? And then literally Marie even says the same thing in her confessionals. Like, did I just hear Latrice admit to doing freaky tale threesomes? with cliff and selena like did i just hear that i'm like yeah you did hear that because we all heard it so in latrice confessional she swears everyone is just jealous of her because she's hot and young and more popular and latrice like seriously grow up miss mississippi messy boots just grow up all of these women are beautiful all of these women have their own like Everybody is just, I feel like people who always try to say people are just hating, they refuse to look at themselves and realize the, the F shit that they do wrong. And she always wants to make it seem like it's people hating on her. No, the way that you move is snaky. Snaky. Yes, I said snaky. She moves that way. And then she gets mad when people call her out on it. And just based on what I'm seeing, what I have seen from Latrice these past three seasons, Latrice is just not the friend type. She's not the friend type. Her loyalty is about her, and that's just what it is. And I feel like if she was just honest with that versus trying to make it seem like that she really is about sisterhood, just be honest and say you're not the friend type. That's just that's just what it is. And and more and more every time we see her on screen, to me she reveals herself even more that that's just the type of person she is. Period. So Akisha, so Gucci and Marie talk and Akisha says, you know, if, you know, Latrice is so Gucci's friend, why are you so upset over what she said? And again, because Latrice is not a friend. She's not a friend to anyone. So as far as she sees it, she can do what she want to do when she want to do it. She's not a friend to anybody. So I think if you guys accept that, you will understand that anything that Latrice does doesn't shock you. Just accept who she is. So Latrice and Tambra, child, <laughs> Latrice and Tambra meet and Latrice says that her and Tambra have a lot in common now. And I'm like, yeah, because y'all shady as hell. That's what y'all got in common. <laughs> but Tambra, she pretty much says you have to have strong evidence when you say someone is a liar. Um, but here's the thing. The show has proven that you're a liar, Tambra, just based off of the flashbacks they've shown and things that you've been caught up in. However, I will say when it comes to your ex word versus yours then yes you have to have more evidence I would have to agree with that instead of the what he said but here's the thing I think Marie says she saw proof he had like paperwork so I think that's the issue she apparently said there was paperwork involved and she looked at the paperwork and saw that some of the things Tambra was saying wasn't true you know but again Tambra got upset over something that she claims wasn't true, which I think a lot of the times it kind of gives a red flag because if it's not true and you have your own proof to back up that he's lying, I wouldn't have gotten that upset. I would have been like, look, Marie, don't come at me with this nonsense, one, because of all the stuff that I've been through with him because she claims she went through a lot. But at the end of the day, my attorney, I will show you the paperwork and you can compare. And then you can see who's telling the truth then. That just that would have been a simple conversation. But the way that she got so upset, I don't know. I just don't know. So Tambra goes in to just like this spill about how she thought these women were her friends and how she has a habit of thinking she means more to people than what the reality is and what they really think of her. And I think we've all been there before where we think that someone actually cares when they really don't. Um, but 
I don't, I don't know. Like, I just feel like Tambra and Latrice are very delusional about the role that they play in these situations. They're very delusional or they just want to stay in their ignorance because ignorance is bliss and they don't want to take accountability. Um, but at the same time, a lot of these women on this show don't take accountability. Even with Letitia and Aikisha, it's clear that they talked. Um, we didn't see it. But to me, an on-camera low blow like Letitia did with Aikisha should have been an on-camera apology. And I hope that we actually see that maybe at the reunion. Um, but while Tambra and Latrice are talking, Latrice says that her motto is, if they breathe in honey, don't trust them. Hmm. Yeah, um, that's interesting for you to say. So Latrice, is that just for women? that motto or is that also for cliff maybe selena i mean because i would feel some type of way if you say that in front of me and pretty much say anything that's breathing don't trust them because then what are you saying about me or hell what are you saying about you so again this is an example of how latrice is not a friend to no one and be careful with people who like to joke a lot and say some slick shit. Because people who like to laugh and joke but say some slick shit or some shit that may catch you off guard, believe what they said, not them laughing and joking, trying to make it seem like it's a joke. Believe what they said. And when she said that, I would have had to distance myself from the trees. Because who says that? If they breathe them, if they breathe in, don't trust them. Uh-uh. Mm-mm. At that point, that would let me know. Thank you very much for this wonderful time out. But at this point, I'm gonna have to keep my distance and we just gonna have to be about business. So Marie is with her mom and her daughter and we see three generations of women in this scene, which is always beautiful. Um, her mom, Marie's mom, had to go to the hospital and get a blood transfusion. And so now she's staying with Marie. And Marie is like, well, what are you going to do now, Ma? Like, are, are you really done with this? And her mom's like, yes, yes, I'm done with this. But Marie, you know your mama's not ready. You can see it in, in your face. She's not ready. She has to be done. Like, I know you want her to be done, but she has to finally be done. And, you know, at the end of the day, like... I feel like, of course, Marie wants her mother to be clean more than her mother wants to be clean. But when her mother made that comment that if I didn't put you through this, you would have been nothing, zero, child, the delusion, the delusion is real in that situation. So that told me everything I needed to know. And I should have told everything Marie, <laughs> that should have told Marie everything she needed to know as well. You know, just wish her the best of luck, but I don't know if she's trying to change at this point, but we shall see. So, so Gucci and JJ are talking and they talk about the drama between her and Latrice. And she tells JJ that you know, what Latrice said about them saying that, you know, JJ and so Gucci want to be her and Cliff. And JJ throws some shade, of course, but at the same time says both Latrice and Cliff are too insecure. And maybe Latrice brings that bad energy because of what she's going through with Cliff. Then he says, Cliff acts like he's drunk most of the time. That's why you can't understand what he says. JJ was throwing shade left and right. Like he, I don't even know what shade he was reading. He was reading. He was just saying that he, he didn't try to sugarcoat nothing. He just said it. So they're preparing or they're talking about So Gucci's birthday party. And then JJ's mama, and I don't even know if that's his mom. I'm going to assume that that's it's, you know, his mom, but her acting is horrible. Like every time she comes on the scene, it just seems so calculated and staged. Um, but side note though, his mom looks really good for her age. If that is his mom, she looks really good. But that little scene, they could have left that out because it was just so extra. And I was just like, maybe she feel like this is her time to shine and finally get her acting on, but it's just bad. So Marie is talking to Essie and they talk about their experiences with their mothers and how Marie says, look, she wants her mom. She doesn't know life without her mom. And Essie says, be thankful that your mom is still here because Essie talks about how she lost her mom 
from cancer and how she got diagnosed in like April and then in May her mother was gone like in four weeks she was gone and Essie starts crying and it's definitely a sad moment and she's like look Marie at least your mother's still here to get it right um you know so Marie says that she has to accept her mom where she's at and not try to change her but she just needs to accept her for where she is and what her current situation is and I 100% agree, Marie, like that, that therapy session definitely helped her that sometimes you just have to let go and let people be just who they are, pray for them, you know, but still be there for them, but not to the point where it drains you. You have to choose yourself first. So, so Gucci party is here. And let me tell you something, they did it up. First of all, so Gucci looked absolutely amazing they had it at a mansion it looks like you know the decorations and everything was beautiful they did their big one so shout out to jj and so gucci as far as you know the whole party is concerned and so all the girls do come to the party if you want my opinion it was a production requirement because why would some of them come if they claim that, you know what I'm saying, all of this nonsense is going on and it's not a real sisterhood, why would you come? Because production told you it was a requirement. You had to come. So, but it seems like everyone enjoys themselves and they leave all of the BS, you know, at the, the peace treaty and they have fun. Gucci, well, JJ actually surprises so gucci with a stripper okay first of all you gotta love jj and his confidence because you know a man gotta be secure in himself to be able to get his woman a stripper for her birthday or for any celebration he was like look y'all want to have some fun I'm about to get y'all a stripper. This man can be all up on my woman. Y'all, it don't matter. Y'all have a ball. So the stripper comes out. And baby, when I said earlier the D isn't silent, <laughs> yeah, it's not. Because he came out with an anaconda. Like, seriously. Okay? And so all the women were like laughing, giggling. But then at the same time, a lot of them was traumatized like Akeisha. Because she was just looking like, what am I looking at right now? But the biggest giggle and kiki in the situation was Cliff, honey. Because Cliff sat up there and said, and we heard him very loud and clear, that's like 15 inches. That's 15 inches. Then we see another scene where the girls are looking and Cliff is looking just as hard as the, the women. He's looking at this stripper. <laughs> who child 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 cliff 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 so the women are having a good time but of course the insecure ones out of the bunch have to try to ruin the night next thing you know Letitia gets all of these text messages from glenn going off on her and then she goes outside to facetime glenn and glenn is telling her that she needs to respect him because she has his last name and he heard from cliff he heard from cliff about what was going on at the party and Letitia's like first of all you ain't about to handle me like cliff handle the trees and at the end of the day i'm just having a good time like it's not a big deal it's a stripper. It's a stripper, meaning he's going to do his job and he's going to go home. What is the big damn deal? Seriously. Like, I just couldn't believe Glenn sat up there and was that upset over something that he didn't actually see just going by what Cliff had to say. And Letitia told him like, you already know how Cliff operates when it comes to Latrice. Why the hell are you even believing anything he had to say? It was just a damn mess. Of course, here we go with the macho man. I'm the man. Bow down to me type of nonsense. It ruined the moment, of course. But that's where the episode goes off. This was actually a pretty good episode. Um, You know, I feel like none of these women, like if this is sisterhood, 
I don't want it because I don't think any of these women truly understand sisterhood. I think some of them have their their separate sisterhoods like Marie and Letitia. I know Akisha is definitely um, building a friendship with Marie now and so Gucci, but all of them together collectively, they're not, they're not a sisterhood. They're not. They are here for the show and that is the bottom line. However, just based on how Miss Mississippi Messy Boots Latrice moves, my personal opinion, I just wouldn't be able to trust her at all whatsoever. The, the things that she has said and the way that she moves, she is about herself. And in my opinion, that is a very dangerous person to trust and be around. Strictly business only with her, but don't sit up there and think that you can confide in her and really have a friendship with her because she'll tell you clearly in a heartbeat that she don't give a shit. If it's about her, it's always going to be about her, and that's just the bottom line. But anywho, what do you guys think about this episode? Give me your comments below. Did you like the episode? What did you think about the So Gucci Latrice argument? What did you think about Cliff and what he said at the end of this episode? You know what I mean? So please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you on my next video. Toodles.